All right, last video analysis of the day is of Jacob Barnes. So Jacob sent me a uh, email with a video last night. I'm going to take a look at now with Jacob. Um, it didn't have the, the distance that he's thrown, but the name of the video is 125 and then the plus symbol. So I'm assuming he's throwing a little over 125 feet or somewhere in the 125 foot range. We're going to take a look, and, and, and just like always, guys, we're going to take a look at, at some of these in real time just to get an idea of what the throw looks like, to get some first impressions of maybe what you're looking for as a thrower when you analyze your own throws or where you work with your teammates or whatever it might be. So let's, uh, let's mute this real quick. <clears throat> Take a look. Thought the coach there was going to get in the way for a second. See it again. So right off the bat, I'm going to say Without looking at it in slow motion, it looks a little bit spinny. It looks a little bit too circular to me. Maybe it's that left arm being a little bit too wide open as he goes through the middle. Maybe it's a movement of his head too. He kind of does like a spotting, kind of like a dancer would do. He turns and looks, turns and looks. That head's going all over the place. But uh, let's, let's take a look at this in real time here and, and see what's going on. So with Jacob, gets nice and low in the back. Does a good job here. You can see right off the bat, he's kind of leading with his upper body out of the back. So for something like this, you can see how, I always pretend, I mean, you gotta imagine it this way. This is the only way I've been able to really explain it to athletes over the years. Imagine if your best friend was walking down a hallway and you were going to jump out from behind, you know, from inside of a room. You were going to jump around the corner and scare your friend as they're coming down the hallway. You got to imagine you're walking down the hallway right now and say you're, you know, Jacob here is hiding in the bathroom. He would never try to scare you by jumping through the wall, trying to put his left shoulder through the wall and throw his head through the wall. He'd have to pivot around the corner of the wall. He'd have to pivot around the doorway to jump out and scare you. You got to think of getting around your left leg sort of in the same way, getting around your left side as the same way. You can see here how he leads with that upper body and he kind of leans back. And if there was a wall there, he'd be trying to put his left shoulder through the wall and run through the wall. He shouldn't be running through the wall. You've got to run around the wall. So see that, how he's really leaning and, and falling backwards into the circle? So we got to do a couple things in the back to clean up the back. First of all, I've got to get this right foot off the ground first and try to have you start to lead with your lower body. So once you pull that discus back, I want you to really start to shift your weight onto your left, <coughs> excuse me, and start pushing off of your right foot. So see how right here you're in that crisscross ballerina kind of position. Your left foot is already starting to point down the circle and the right foot isn't even off the ground yet. So I need you to get your right foot off the ground right about here. The right foot should be starting to come off the ground. And your right foot doesn't get off the ground until right here. And see how you're in that crisscross position? Now it's going to take this right foot, it's going to come all the way around and then go all the way down the circle. And more than likely in this position, you're either going to be over rotated or it's going to be sort of a jump to try to get out of the way of your left side. Yeah, and look at the left arm. Wide open. You look like the, uh, the Rolls Royce symbol on the front of a Rolls Royce with the wings going backwards. You get both your arm, both your hands behind you, and you're about to drive through that circle. And look at where the right foot is. So think back to Mac Wilkins. He always said, low left and long. So you start pretty low. 
and look how low I want that chest up a little bit but as you go get low so bend those legs get low shift your weight onto your left side so you can't pivot on your left foot if there's no weight on your left foot shift the weight onto the left side and get this right leg nice and low and long to the ground instead of the up in the air with the high kick low to the ground. What that's going to do is it's going to make the back of the circle a lot more efficient. The other thing I would try to work on with you too, Jacob, is not letting this left arm open so much. You've got that left arm behind you and that's going to turn this movement into a spin. So see how there was really no drive? There was no run. There was no bounding down the middle. It was kind of a hop in the air and spin around. You're trying to get your back to the official. You're trying to get your butt to the official as quickly as possible. I really don't like that form of throwing. I definitely want to see more of a drive. Again, go underneath this YouTube channel and check out the wall drill. It's going to teach you to keep your head, chest, hips, belly button driving down the middle, driving down the left sector instead of jumping and twisting in midair. You can see here you're leading with your right hip. I want to see you lead with your chest. If you're wearing a belt, you would lead with your belt buckle. Drive down the middle. Okay. Doing a good job of landing up on the toe in the middle, but see how you haven't driven anywhere? You're still in the back half of that circle. Your toe is in the back half. Let's work on that drive across the circle. Chest first, head first, belt buckle first, drive down that circle so that you can land a little bit deeper in the front half of that circle. From here you can see for me the left getting down on the ground is the start of the power position. So when your left foot hits the ground you're wide open you're already starting to throw that discus and that left arm is wide open as well. So a couple quick things to work on. The first is going to be really controlling that left arm. Don't let that left arm open too much. Keep the left arm even with your left knee. So see how the left knee is pointing sort of at this pole over here and your left hand is pointing probably at the front pole? Let's not open up that upper body too early. Let's work on keeping that upper body closed a little bit better and really work on leading with your lower body out of the back of that circle. Get the right foot off the ground earlier. Keep the right foot lower to the ground in the back to avoid this crisscross and the high kick. Crisscross and a high kick, your foot just has way too far to travel because it's going up in the air. It's already late. And then it goes up in the air, down, and then up in the air to the middle. So it's just a really long, bumpy racetrack. We need to smooth that out. So really work on shifting your weight over to your left, getting low in the back, shifting your weight onto your left, and getting that right foot off the ground earlier, keeping it low near the grass. You should almost be like a golf club. Imagine there was a golf ball that was sitting here on a tee right on the edge of the grass where the grass and the cement meet. Your foot should be like that driver. It should be like a golf club where it's getting low, almost scraping the grass outside the circle. Keep it low toward the ground and long away from your body. If you can do that and keep this left arm closed a little bit better, not lead by with your left shoulder or your left hand, you're going to clean up the back of the circle and it's going to help you to improve that drive down the middle because now you don't have to sit here on your left foot and wait. Look how long you're waiting on your left foot before you drive. Remember the goal of this, one of the goals of the, of the rotational shot in the discus is to, for a right-handed thrower, you've got to be able to get your left foot to the front of the circle as quickly as you possibly can and as efficiently as you possibly can. So watch how long you're on your left. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
11, 12 frames of this video. You're just balanced on your left foot. If we can get the right foot off the ground earlier, if we can keep that left arm closed a little bit more, and if we can improve this driving position, man, with that wall drill, you know, massive amount of distance is going to be added to your throw. Just because you're, you're going to be in a better position, you're going to have better separation, you're going to be faster and more efficient through the circle. It always starts in the back, and I know I always say that in these video analysis, that it always starts in the back, and that whatever happens in the back is going to happen in the front. It's, it's so true. If you start out in the back of the circle wide open with a late right foot, you're going to get to the front of the circle wide open. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are killing me today. So, again, that wall drill is going to help here. And the other thing is just staying in that power position. So if we keep you more closed in the back, and if we keep you more closed in the middle where you're not doing that right arm thing right here, more closed in the back, more closed in the middle, you're going to be in a better power position, not as wide open. And you're going to throw a heck of a lot farther too, man. Again, you got the jump and throw. Keep those feet on the ground. But again, you can see how it's all connected. So you're jumping and throwing. Why are you jumping and throwing? Well, more than likely it's because you were too open and you really had nowhere else to go. You couldn't apply power as long as possible. You couldn't push the earth down as much as you wanted to because you were too wide open. So you jumped and threw. Now, why were you too wide open? Let's start to be that Sherlock Holmes and trace things back. Why were you too wide open? Well, you're too wide open because you're really open here with that left arm in the back of the circle. Why are you too open in the back of the circle? Well, because it took forever for that right foot to get off the ground, and you're leading with your upper body out of the back. So whatever happens in the back is going to multiply and become a bigger problem in the front. Like this right here doesn't look like a big issue, but you can see how it turned into a big issue at the front of the circle. So that's the stuff to work on. Mac Wilkins, low left long. Get lower in the back of the circle. Shift your weight over the left. Keep that right foot nice and long and low to the ground, just like a golf club. Like you're trying to hit a golf ball off a tee right in the grass. Right foot nice and low low left and long and don't open up this left arm in the back either keep that left arm closed keep it even maybe with your right knee even your right hip would be a big improvement and then wall drill really 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 go watch that video under this channel of the John Godino wall drill when John showed that to me it was the biggest light bulb that ever popped over my head in the God, 23 years now at this point that I've been involved in the sport of track and field as an athlete and a coach, that wall drill really opened up my eyes to making this from a spin to a drive. And that wall drill video is going to be clutch for anyone who wants to improve their rotational shot or discus. Go watch that video. All right, wall drill, Mac Wilkins low left and long, we're looking at at least another 10 to 15 feet on the end of this throw. You're going to be torqued back in a better power position. You're going to be faster and more efficient through the circle. Um, and you're going to be getting closer to the front of the circle. You're going to be more aggressive. You're going to be able to keep your feet on the ground. You're going to be able to accelerate the discus farther uh, or harder. All that stuff is going to happen by fixing these things. So thanks for sending in the video. Uh, again, if there's any questions, shoot me a quick email back or leave a comment down below the video. And uh, we're only doing a couple of these a day, so I can't get to all of them. I know I probably had about 10 people email me yesterday, and I'm sorry. I just don't have the time to get to all of these. Um, but keep sending them in. I'll keep doing them, even if it's throughout the summer and you want to keep doing them. I'll try to bust out one or two a day for you. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, checking out the video, and we'll talk to you soon.